Bubba? Bubba? Are you dreaming about attacking that cat? Oh, you stinker. <laughs> that poor cat. What'd she do to deserve that? Poor Freddy. I mean, Maple. Poor Maple. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Coming in for day one of another experiment. I have been enjoying doing different experiments for the last few weeks. Um, I did the sardine challenge, I did the egg fast, and various other things. From the title, you can tell that this challenge is probably going to be a little bit more enjoyable. I am planning on doing a keto chow fast. I'm thinking three days, but I'm going to, you know, take it day by day and see how it goes. So like I said, I think it's gonna be a lot more enjoyable than the other challenges I did. Although if you watched my Wellness Wednesday or Wellness Thursday from this past week, um, I was talking in there about the enjoyability, the enjoyment of food, um, actually affecting hunger and cravings. And sometimes having like mono food diets and things that you don't really like as your primary food source, can really help like suppress the hunger. I found that to be the case with the sardine challenge especially and also somewhat with the egg fast challenge. And so I am curious, um, Keto Chow is very delicious. <laughs> they do such a fantastic job of making a delicious yummy shake. So I'm very curious to see like my body's response to that. I want to see if it's easy for me to stick to just the three keto chows per day. I have it formulated that I'll do three keto chows a day, each with about two ounces of butter. And that's going to give me like my fat percentage in the like 70% range, like somewhere between 70 and 80%. And then it'll keep my protein around the 75 gram mark, which is almost exactly where I landed with the egg fast. And I saw my ketones go super high with the egg fast, especially after three days. And for me, super high, not for a lot of other people. But since I normally don't get above 0.5, Super high for me is like 1 to 1.5, and I was able to see that, especially on day three of the egg fast. I got up to that 1 to 1.5 and like just stayed there for a really long time. So the macros are going to be very similar to that with this keto chow challenge. Now, I don't have my continuous ketone monitor on anymore, sadly, but because I have, um, you know, kind of seen how I felt at those levels, as well as like what my blood glucose does at those levels. And because I have a blood ketone monitor where I can just take a snapshot anytime I feel like I need to, um, I should be able to kind of compare how I feel on this versus how I felt on the egg fast especially, but then all of the other challenges as well. And I'm really curious to see if throwing in a keto chow day here and there would be a good strategy for me to get my ketones up a little bit. I've talked about this so many times, um, so I'm sorry if you've heard me say this already over and over again, but I both value higher protein, like over 100 grams. Typically, I'm at 100 to 150 grams per day for all kinds of reasons. And um, that's something that is really, really important to me. But I've also, with the challenges that I've done to increase ketone levels, have come to value the way my brain feels on a little bit higher of a ketone level. And protein consumption can affect your ketone level. And I find that when I eat that 100 to 150 grams of protein per day, my ketones don't ever get really above 0.5. And so if I want to see a higher ketone level, I both need to reduce my calories. I found that reducing calories was more important than just adding fat when it came to increasing ketone numbers. So to see my numbers go up, I need to reduce calories a certain amount and reduce protein a certain amount. Now, like I said, I really value the protein, so I'm not interested in a strategy where I just reduce my calories and reduce my protein and eat that way every single day. I'm looking for tools of different types of days and formulating some kind of a pattern or schedule of different kinds of days so that I can get that boost in ketones, but then also have days where I'm getting that higher protein and getting the benefits from that as well. I did find that when I put in the work to get the higher ketone numbers, both on the sardine fast and on the egg fast, 
that about for three days after both of those, my ketone levels stayed higher even when I added in the protein. It took two to three days to start seeing the number, the ketone numbers go back down. So I do think it might be a good strategy to have certain days of the week where I'm eating more ketogenic, a little bit lower protein, high fat percentage, but then also that little bit lower calorie. And by lower calorie, I mean like 14, 15, 1600 calories. So not crazy low, but not, not a level that I would want to sustain forever. So some days like that, and then some days um, like my regular baseline diet days where I'm eating that higher amount of protein, calories coming in somewhere between 2000 or 2400, like higher you know, regular calorie days. So what I'm planning on doing is three keto shows per day. Um, each one, I'm gonna put in two ounces of butter and that's gonna get my fat percentage in that 70, somewhere in the 70s, 70% range. My calories should be somewhere around 1500 or so. I am planning on still having my coffee with MCT oil powder, so that will add a little bit more fat. So I'm thinking my calories will end up somewhere between 15 and 1600 ish and um, my protein will be around that 75 grams so I'm really interested to see if keto chow is a good strategy for me to get in those ketogenic days if it is it will be super convenient it's so nice to not have to worry about cooking just mixing up your shakes or ice cream I will use my ninja creamy uh, for ice cream during this challenge for sure. I spend so much time in the kitchen cooking for everybody and cleaning and like so much energy on food that just to have the option of saying I'm only having keto chows for one day, two days, three days, it just takes a little bit of a mental load off of me. And so if it works out, I'm excited for that. Also, my husband is working a lot. He has some big jobs. Summertime is big for contractors, of course, and so he has some big jobs, so he's gone a lot these days, and it's just the right time. It's just easy. The kids don't have a lot of activities that you know they have planned. We're just kind of having a little bit of a lazy summertime, and it just seemed like the right time to do this and to have the little bit of a mental break and the experiment and just see how it goes. So I am gonna be bringing you guys along, of course. I'll be sharing my blood sugar data from my NutriSense CGM. I will show you like how my macros and my calories end up and just kinda of take you along with like how I feel and seeing if it's really gonna be a doable strategy for me. So anyways, this is my breakfast. I have already mixed up a strawberry cream keto chow. Now this is their new strawberry cream flavor. Uh, I did a video on that um, just a few days ago. So we did a taste test comparing the new strawberry cream to the old strawberry. And this one is like top notch. It's so good. And the strawberry flavor, I said in the video, it reminds me of crunch berries. Now I know not everyone likes that kind of thing, but I do. I like crunch berries. I like that strawberry cereal flavor. And this just tastes like a crunch berry milkshake. So, so good. Anyway, so I am going to have this for my first meal of the day. I have some creamy pints in the freezer um, getting ready to so I can have ice cream. And um, I'm not planning out all of the different meals that I'm going to have. I'm just going to, that's the nice thing about keto chow is you can, you know, be ready for a meal and be like, ooh, what flavor do I get to choose today? And you can kind of see how you feel and uh, pick what you want. So that is the plan. It is, I think, around 10 a.m. right now. I haven't looked at the clock recently. Um, and I'm having my first keto chow. We are going to the river today to swim with some friends. So I'm planning to mix up a shake before we go. And so I will have that if I need it. I have like a cooler bag that I'll just pack it in. My favorite way to have keto chow is like a milkshake. Um, I love it that way when I do it in my Vitamix with ice and it's just like the perfect milkshake. So I will probably do that before we go and then throw it in my cooler bag and it'll be ready for me to have whenever I need it while we're out. And I will just take you along throughout the day. It's actually 11.15. I really should pay more attention to the clock. I am mixing up the keto chow to take with me and going to do birthday cake. I kind of think this is my favorite flavor right now. 
I really do. It's so good. Um, oh, and I'm also going to mix up an element electrolyte to bring with me as well. Forgot to mention that's another thing beyond coffee that I am keeping in while I do this keto chow fast. We made it to the river. I, we had to stop at the store, so I grabbed a coffee. I was going to make a second cup of coffee before I left the house, but time just got away from me, didn't get it done, so decided to splurge on a cold brew with some heavy cream at Starbucks. We are just going to enjoy our time. The, the weather today, it's like on the cusp of not quite being warm enough for this to be enjoyable, but we decided to risk it anyway, so we shall see. Talia, how's the water? It feels okay. Not feels okay. You, it's, you just kind of have to plunge. It's like a cold plunge. You run and then you get used to it or you go numb and then it becomes somewhat enjoyable. <laughs> We've been here for a couple of hours. It's surprisingly quite pleasant to swim. Like I was worried the water was gonna be super, super cold, like frigid, but it's not bad at all. I have just been sipping on my keto chow every once in a while. We're just having a relaxing, fun time at the, at the river. It's great. That doesn't have anything in it. You found a shell? Yeah, big one, but it doesn't have anything in it. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's not alive? Yeah. That's cool. Mm. I'll look at it and see. It's a little after six and I am ready to make my ice cream. I'm gonna do chocolate mint and in here has two ounces of butter. So I'm gonna get this mixed up. I expect I probably won't be able to eat the entire serving in one sitting. So I'm thinking I'll have a serving, like half, and then um, kind of see how I feel for the rest of the, rest of the evening and then have the other half if I feel like it. Here is my chocolate mint keto chow. I love chocolate mint keto chow made into ice cream. I mean, all the flavors are good made into ice cream, but chocolate mint is fantastic. Uh, so I am going to enjoy as much of this as I feel like. The kids are all tired after our afternoon at the river, and so I am relaxing with my ice cream. I think I'm going to go watch Wendy and Harry's video on um, their keto chow fast, keto chow challenge. People get real upset when you say the word fast and you don't mean zero food. <laughs> Which is really funny to me because the definition of fast includes like mono food fast, like juice fast, or fasting with just one particular thing. Fasting does not just mean abstaining from all food. It just doesn't. But people get real upset. But maybe we should just call it a keto chow challenge to keep everybody happy. Anyways, um, having a nice relaxing afternoon after a very nice time at the river and uh, I am enjoying it. I am out throwing the ball for the dogs while the children play, and um, I ate that whole thing of ice cream. <laughs> I just sat and watched YouTube videos and ate the whole pint, even though that's not actually a pint, of ice cream. It was wonderful. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm not gonna lie though, I really would enjoy something savory right now. Some cheese, some carnivore crisps, like even like I was, uh, I was scrolling on something and I saw olives and I was like, oh, that sounds so good. <laughs> something like savory. <laughs> and if I do get desperate for something savory in these uh, like three days, I can do a savory keto chow. That is always an option. Although I love the shakes and the ice cream so much that I don't know if I want to like give up one of those <laughs> to have 
a soup, especially not on a hot day like today. So anyways, that is an option if I need it. Um, and I'm not hungry. Like physically, I'm not hungry. It's just like, ooh, something savory sounds real good right now. Something crunchy, something salty. Um, but I don't think it'll be overpowering or anything. I think I'll be able to make it through. But I did want to uh, document that that is how I'm feeling right now. For my first day on the Keto Chow Challenge, I got in 1,805 calories total. I got 81.9 grams of protein. I got 158.7 grams of fat, so about a two to one ratio of fat to protein. And then I got 22.3 total carbs or 8.3 net carbs. My fat percentage came in at 77.4%. I was shooting for that 75%. That's what I was expecting, so real, real close to that. I got 17.8% of my calories from protein and 4.8% of my calories from carbs. And here is a peak at my blood sugar for the day on my NutriSense CGM app. You can see I had kind of a jump in the morning. I kind of think that was when I took my shower. That happens often. I've heard that from other people as well that just the hot shower can cause a blood sugar spike. And then it came back down before I ate anything. You can see down here that every single one of my meals, I got a score of 10 on, including the cold brew with heavy cream. I did have a little bit of a spike after the, um, lunch. And if you remember, I ate my lunch kind of, I just sipped on it throughout the time we were at the river. So I didn't just sit down and drink the whole thing at once. And I think the, like the up and down, the little tiny bit of a spike that I had there after I ate, I don't think it was related to the food or the keto chow. I think it was the shock of the cold river, like something about the, the hot and the cold, um, extreme temperatures cause blood sugar to do funny stuff. Hot shower in the morning caused a spike. I think the cold river and my body adjusting to that caused a little bit of a, I don't know, stress response or something. Anyways, it did come back down and I still got a score of 10 on that meal. Um, started with a blood sugar of 84, peaked at 101 and then had a blood sugar of 83 two hours later. So no worries about that at all. Pretty beautiful blood sugar uh, across the board for the day. I got an average of 82 and that is dropped down a little bit. So I am seeing the same kind of pattern that I saw in the other challenges that I've done. When I'm just eating regularly with my higher protein level that I normally eat, my blood sugar has been on average in the 90s, in the low 90s, not anything that's concerning, but I do notice that when I do challenges like this, and this one is following the same pattern, that my blood sugar does tend to go down on average. So down to 82, and you can see towards the end of the day, it really started going down and uh, stayed pretty low overnight. With my other challenges, I definitely noticed that when my blood sugar went down, my ketones started to go up. So even though I don't have the continuous ketone monitor on right now, I can guess that my ketones are probably starting to creep up a little bit. Having both the continuous ketone monitor on and the continuous glucose monitor on at the same time during the other challenges helped me really see those patterns with the glucose so that I can kind of get an idea of what my ketones are doing just based on what my blood sugar is doing. So that is very, very helpful. I do work with NutriSense and get my CGMs through them. And I do have a link down below where you can get more information. They give me a little bit of a kickback anytime someone clicks that link and adds their email address for more info. So if you do want to support my channel, it's a really easy and free way to do it, and you will get all of the info about NutriSense. There are a lot of different ways to get CGMs now, which I'm super excited about because I really want this technology to become more available to people. But one thing that NutriSense offers that is very unique is that they actually have dietitians on staff that can help walk you through all of your blood sugar data. They can help like set up different tests for you and experiments and just kind of hold your hand through the process. So if it's just something you need a little bit more guidance in, NutriSense is a great resource for that. Thanks so much for hanging out with me on my first Keto Chow day. I will be back again tomorrow with day two and I will see you there.